Welcome to Simply Explained English, the podcast, where we make learning English easy and fun. I am Lisa. I am Eric. In each episode, we explain five English words or phrases in simple, basic English. Whether you're a student, a professional, or just someone who loves learning English, this podcast is for you. So let's get started and make English simple and enjoyable together. What are the words today, Eric? The first word today is ambitious. Then we will continue with in spite of. And to run away. Then, so far, so good. And the final one is on the go. Today's words are really interesting. Yes, they are, Lisa. Okay, the first word today is ambitious. 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 Ambitious means having a strong desire to succeed or achieve something. Ambitious people usually work very hard and have big goals. Exactly, Lisa. For example, we could say she is ambitious and plans to start her own company. This sentence shows that she has big plans for her future and has been working hard to make them. Good example. Another sentence could be, he's very ambitious about his studies. This means he is very determined to do well in school. Perfect. Let's imagine two athletes, Laura and David, talking after training. David, you've set some ambitious targets for this season. Yes, I want to be a champion. And for that, I need ambitious goals. I agree with you. You need to be ambitious to achieve big goals. That was an inspiring example. They both use the word ambitious to describe their goals. It's good to have ambitions. By the way, ambition is the noun form of ambitious. Thank you for explaining ambition, Lisa. Let me give you an example of ambition. She had always had some ambition to be a pilot. That's a good example. Let's go back to the word ambitious, Eric. Were you ambitious when you were younger? I was, Lisa. I was very ambitious to become a teacher, and here I am. What about you, Lisa? Oh, absolutely. I was ambitious about learning languages, and now I can speak two foreign languages. It's always good to hear how being ambitious brings success. I think it helps people make goals and work hard to achieve them. I agree. Ambition can help us achieve our dreams. But do you think there is a difference between being ambitious and being too ambitious? That's a good question, I think. Being ambitious is good, but being too ambitious can be stressful. It's important to have a balance. What do you think, Lisa? I think the same. We should be ambitious, but also take care of ourselves. As you said, being too ambitious might be very stressful and it can negatively affect our lives. And that's ambitious for our listeners. Remember, being ambitious means having a strong desire to achieve something great. Let's move on to our next word. What's the next word, Eric? The next word is in spite of. In spite of. In spite of. In spite of is used to show differences or difficulties. It means the same as despite. And it is similar to the meaning of even though which we explained in video number 43. That's a very useful phrase. We use it to describe a situation that might be surprising because it happens even though it is difficult. Exactly, Lisa. For example, you might say, in spite of the rain, we went for a walk. It shows that even though it was raining, which usually stops people from going outside, we still went for a walk. Another example could be, she could not pass the exam in spite of studying hard. This means she studied hard, but could not pass the exam anyway. Remember, in spite of is a phrase, and it is often followed by a noun or a gerund, verb plus ing. For example, you can say, in spite of the bad weather, the rain, or in spite of feeling sick, or studying hard. Good grammar point, Eric. Now let's hear in spite of used in a sample dialogue. This time, imagine two co-workers, Mark and Tina, discussing a project at work. Mark, how's the project going? 
I heard there were some problems. It's going well in spite of those problems. We managed to find another solution at the last minute. That's impressive, especially in spite of the tight deadline. Do you think we'll finish on time? Yes, I'm confident we will. The team is working hard in spite of these problems. That was a nice dialogue. Mark's team is doing well in spite of some problems. Eric, do you think it's hard to do things in spite of some difficulties? Yes, sometimes it can be hard, but it feels good when we achieve our goals in spite of problems. I agree. Overcoming difficulties makes us stronger. Do you have an example from your life? Yes, I do. I was once studying for exams in spite of being very tired. It was tough, but I did well. How about you, Lisa? I once went hiking in spite of the rain. It was challenging, but the view was worth it. That's the power of in spite of. It shows our determination or effort. So, listeners, remember to use in spite of when you want to express that you overcome a problem or difficulty. All right, now let's move on to the next word, Eric. The next word is to run away. To run away. To run away. It is a phrasal verb. Yes, Lisa. To run away means to leave a place quickly because you are scared or don't want to stay. For example, if you see a big dog and you are scared, you might run away. For example, the cat ran away when it saw the dog. Another meaning is to avoid dealing with a problem. She ran away from her responsibilities, or most of the students ran away from him when he tried to talk to them. Good examples. And a quick note about grammar. After run away, we sometimes use from, like your example. And another one, people ran away from the burning building. Let's put to run away into a dialogue. Imagine a scene where two friends are discussing a recent event at school. Did you hear what happened to Sarah during the meeting? She ran away in the middle of the conversation. Yes, I saw her. She looked really upset. Why did she run away? Later, she told me that she felt really nervous and just needed to escape for a bit. I hope she's okay. It's hard to see someone run away from stress. Yeah, I'm going to talk to her later and see if she needs any help. That dialogue really shows how to run away can be used in different contexts. It does, Eric. The first run away in the dialogue means that Lisa ran away from the meeting place. She ran away in the middle of the conversation. This is the literal meaning. The other one means that she is running away from stress, which is a metaphorical meaning. Yes, Lisa. Good explanation. Eric, have you ever wanted to run away from something? Sometimes, Lisa. Like many people, I've wanted to run away from difficult tasks at work, but I try to face them instead. What about you? Actually, like you. Sometimes I want to run away during some tough times, but I try to calm down and focus on what I do. Speaking of running away, according to the news, thousands of children run away from home each year. It's very sad, isn't it? Yes, it is, Lisa. Something should be done to deal with this problem. I agree, Eric. Okay, it's good for our listeners to understand that to run away can be literal or figurative. It can help them express feelings of escaping or avoiding. Okay, let's move on to the next word. The next word is so far, so good. So far, so good. So far, so good. We use this expression to say that things have been going well until now. It's a really positive phrase, isn't it? It suggests that although more time is needed to see the final result, everything is fine for now. We need more time to see the final result, but it means that everything is going well so far or until now. Exactly, Lisa. If someone asks you how your new job is going, you could say, so far, so good. This means that everything has been going well up until now. Another scenario could be during a long drive. You might check in with your passengers and say, so far, so good, meaning the journey is going smoothly without any problems. Now let's put this expression into a dialogue. Imagine two students working on a group project together. How's the project going, Jenna? 
So far, so good. I found some really useful sources. That's great to hear. I'm making good progress on my writing side. So far, so good. Perfect. If we keep up this pace, we should finish earlier we plan. That was a nice dialogue. Eric, when do you think people use the phrase so far so good? People use it when they want to say that everything is going well up to a certain point. I agree. It's a simple way to say that things are fine until now. Do you have an example from your life? Yes. When I started learning to cook, I sometimes said, so far, so good, after making each dish successfully. How about you, Lisa? When I was learning to drive, my instructor often said, so far, so good during our lessons. It made me feel more confident. For everyone learning English, try using this phrase when you want to express that things are going well until that point. It's a useful, optimistic phrase. Well, it's time for our last word today. Yes, Lisa. The last word today is on the go. On the go. On the go. On the go means to be busy and active, moving from one place to another. It's used to describe someone who is always doing something or going somewhere. For example, you might say, she is always on the go from work to the gym to meeting friends. This means you eat while commuting or rushing to work because you don't have time to sit down. Absolutely, Lisa. Another example could be, he's always on the go, juggling school and two part-time jobs. This shows that he is constantly moving from one task to another without much downtime. Let's hear how this phrase works in a dialogue. Imagine two friends catching up after not seeing each other for a while. Hey Sam, how have you been? I haven't seen you in ages. Hi Nina, I've been good, just always on the go. How about you? I'm the same here, I'm always on the go. Work has been crazy and I joined a dance class as well. Sounds like you're keeping busy. It's tough, but fun to be on the go all the time. Absolutely, it keeps life exciting. That dialogue shows both friends are leading busy lives, constantly on the move. It really does, Eric. Using on the go helps express that they are busy and active in their lives. Do you often find yourself on the go, Eric? I do, Lisa. Between recording podcasts, attending meetings, and going to the gym, I'm always on the go. What about you, Lisa? Between work, volunteering, and social commitments, I cannot find time to sit down. It's important for our listeners to understand that on the go can be used to describe their busy lives in English. It's a useful phrase for everyday conversation. Indeed, Eric. Even though it can be tiring, some might think it's living a full and busy life. We hope this discussion helps you understand how to use on the go. I, well, I guess that's the end of our podcast. That's all for today's episode of Simply Explained English. Remember to repeat the new words in your daily studies. And thank you for listening. And don't forget to tune in next time for more easy and fun English lessons. We hope you enjoyed learning with us. Until then, keep practicing and stay curious. Bye-bye. Bye for now.